the project that Henry will present now, it is uh, the project for open education idea development. I need to mention that we use this platform to overcome challenges in OUVM projects. We created material under open culture licenses using this portal as the tools for editable versions of OER. Because we usually speak about OERs, about their possibility to be reused and used and edit, edited, but sometimes we just need skills. So with, the, with this uh, fact, we're very happy. Henry, thank you for joining in. And now the floor is yours. Thank you, Irene, for the kind words. Hello, everyone. It's, uh, and thank you for this opportunity to be at MU and to be part of this Open Professional Collaboration Conference. It's really a pleasure to be here, even through from, from distance this time. But I think this fits pretty nicely because my presentation is about idea sharing in professional virtual communities, so in a distributed setting. So I think it fits pretty nicely. So we can put some of these uh, things that we study in our project into practice and into test. But uh, firstly, my name is uh, Henry Pirkalainen. I'm a project researcher in the uh, University of Jyväskylä in, in mid-Finland, mid where it's pretty sunny right now. And uh, as, as Irina told, we, have, we can actually go quite a long way back uh, to 2009 when the Open Scout project started that dealt with open educational resources for uh, business and management related topics. And we came to understand in that project that the for example, open educational resources reuse uh, is, is very hard to pull through. And also collaborations towards creating open educational resources together is, is quite hard in a distributed manner. And this project called the Open Educational Ideas and Innovations uh, tries to tackle some of these problems coming from a bit new angle to some of these uh, challenges, but also the potentials we have in the open educational uh, open education domain. Uh, but firstly, just like uh, the key issue for the project and also for this presentation is how can we increase educational collaborations towards new courses and educational services. For example, when we are creating open educational resources in a collaborative manner with our colleagues, with our potential colleagues all over the world. So how can we make better use of, of the information and communication technologies to support the open education movement? And this is the, really the key aspect of, uh, that we want to address. And uh, I think, yeah, all of you, I, I'm sure you know the potentials of open education and open educational resources versus the kind of a current uptake. So there have been all kinds of successful cases in, when it comes to uh, usage of OER, but also for reusing, uh, increased collaboration, quality improvements of materials, of, of, the, of the lessons, of the courses, uh, cost savings in many cases where you can distribute kind of the efforts to many people, um, and, but really to foster and enable cross-border teaching and knowledge exchange between professionals, because I mean this is really to, it's about the transparency and openness in education that we want to pull push forward, but in many cases OER use and especially reuse is really not a common practice, especially in higher education domain. Uh, the same is, uh, of course, the, like school education, but also enterprises, they deal with their own kinds of problems, but uh, especially in higher education there are quite many challenges when it comes to uh, reuse and collaboration around open education. and. Uh, what we can safely say is that reuse of the materials that you find there online is rather low. And also, in some cases, there's a bit of a lack of appreciation and recognition in the, in the community. And uh, it's clear that we need some kind of a new measures and methods to support open education movement to go a couple of steps, let's say, higher and forward. And what we are proposing in this project is, uh, is something new. Actually, exactly, it's nothing too new because it, it deals with idea sharing. So that we develop ideas collaboratively from the very initial ideas towards real solutions and tangible outcomes. For example, new courses, new lesson materials, and so on. 
instead of sharing something that is all already finalized and completed, uh, what you usually see in repositories that you people are sharing materials that they have already used, they have created, and sometimes reusing something that others have created is, is rather hard. And we want to start go a couple of steps back and start collaboratively thinking about finding synergies, trying to do this quality improvement, cost savings, all of this by going to the collaboration in an early phase when we are about to develop our courses, let's say in the next few months, and making use of the groups of educators but also other types of stakeholders online for the purpose and utilize virtual communities with, that have shared interests and they share the same ambition. And this is what the project is all about. Uh, so the Open Educational Ideas Project, it uh, develops new ways for students and educators to share information and especially ideas. And the key outcome of the project is something called the idea space. That, and you can access it through this idea that's based at EU link if you have your uh, any kinds of devices uh, in, in front of you there in the room. And um, the key thing is to exchange ideas towards OERs, towards full courses, open textbooks, new educational projects, supplementary materials to support open education. So more or less you decide yourself what, what you are what to what you want to pursue in the open education umbrella and we give you the space to do that and uh, of course there are you can come and share your own ideas or you can share, join some of the existing like uh, collaborations and workspaces in this uh, platform and what you can do in this collaborative environment is to plan your steps your idea sharing process get your colleagues get your networks around you together working on this. We provide different types of collaborative functionalities for you to do this in terms of synchronous writing but also conferencing, chatting and uh, of course the main thing is to share your work and like uh, let other people also contribute and give their two cents on how, how this might be done differently or give you some fresh perspectives or like uh, confirm what you, what you know uh, dep depending on, on what the idea is all about. Uh, but what we can see emerging in this idea space at the moment, uh, there are quite potential and emerging topics, not necessarily only just for uh, building some OER or building a new course, but actually to explore something bigger where there might be then new courses or mat materials created. Uh, some of the topics are OER for integrating refugees, big, big important problem people are facing right now. And the thing is that how can open very rapidly, let's say in, in fin Finland, there's uh, going to be in primary schools uh, and secondary schools the new curriculum next year. And programming is, is coming. It's coming fast. And we need to also find out how can we support programming for kids this is one of the topics. But also like there are ed educational projects. So how can we make school or educational institutions a bit more healthy? How can we I increase well-being of individuals at work? So there are very potential topics that you can be part of, but also that you can also come and share your own one and let others take part and contribute into that. But what we can see is that there are some considerations to like take into account because sharing ideas in a distributed setting is not trivial, if, if it even is in a, in a face-to-face -face manner, because uh, First of all, the outcome expectations kind of need to be clear when, when you come together and work on something so that you, you see some benefits of, of being part of the collaboration. This is, this is one of the key things. Uh, and also, there are big differences when it comes to individuals like how protective you are towards your ideas or do you welcome the uh, help of others? So do you let others to really contribute? And, and we can see that the, it's, it's natural that some people are a bit more protective and they want to share something when, when they have kind of a thought to it themselves, kind of that, that they are a bit further ahead. But what we want to do is really let people get their creative minds, like their creative hats, like uh, on their heads and really, really to push the boundaries of open education, really. And not just like focus on sharing what already is there, but thinking a bit further, what could we create? So if this 
uh, inspired your thinking, uh, we invite you to create your idea space in, uh, uh, in, in our idea space, and we help you to spread the word about it and find some collaborators. But also, if you, if you are in your institution, you have a specific software system where you see that this kind of a collaborative environment for exchanging ideas could make sense. We can also explore some possibilities to integrate idea space for your own purposes. And I think I have taken most of my time, so I think I'll give the room back, back to you. So thanks all for, for listening and, and the greetings from Uvascular once more. For your presentation, uh, if there is one question, because he is going to disconnect, <laughs> <laughs> and we have no um, Okay, one question, please. <laughs> Do you hear me? Yeah, we'll tell me yes. 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 from Vilnius University Business School. So my question is related to you have been listing the several uh, several educational um, services like uh, uh, um, access for the refugees, let's say, and it was mentioned the new educational services. Can you comment a bit on that? Yes, yeah, so uh, we have some educators, but also some students who wanted to like uh, create their own idea space, so for more or less their own workspace where they can think about, for example, what kind of a new software or systems we could develop for, for certain purposes. So it's, it's more or less, uh, it can be on a service level, but it also can be just like uh, how a particular system could help us to do our work better. So there are some like uh, some uh, workspaces that are created in uh, in some um, in DHPW. So it's it's more or less a kind of a combination of a, of a, of a uni university, but they are closely working with with the industry. So they are, for example, thinking some some potential uh, systems and software to to support, for example, better connection between uh, educational institutions and and the industry. But there are also some thing, some potential thinking, just like uh, uh, for new environments to support programming. So there's a bit of a variance there. So I, I think there are some 20 different types of workspaces where different types of services or software or even infrastructures are being being discussed. So maybe you can a bit exp explore yourself and, and if you find something that's relevant for you. And of course, you can always ask us uh, how to maybe push your own topic or, or how to find these collaborators. But I hope this answers your question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we have no time for more questions, but I'm sure it would be. Thank you again, Henry. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye.